Hey, I'm getting ready to watch episode 24 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and I'm recording this on the morning after Thanksgiving, so I'm feeling a little sluggish. <laughs> I think I ate a whole lot more than I usually eat yesterday, so I'm having some distended abdominal uh, situation, so I'm dragging a little bit. Feeling a little sluggish, but I think I can still give us a good reaction. And maybe today I can relate to the character Gluttony more than I could have two days ago. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get to it. And I'll just take a minute here during the OP to remind everybody that I do have a Patreon, just in case you didn't know that. And if you're interested in checking the Patreon out, seeing what's going on over there, there is a link in the video description. So check it out. If you're watching this on Patreon, you rock. And you know, we didn't have karaoke on Thanksgiving when uh, you know my, my father, my stepmother came over, the whole family, seven of us, it would have been a good time to try to karaoke especially since I've had all this extra practice watching these uh, OPs. I could have broken out some of the FMAB, really rocked the party with it. All right, episode's getting started here. Oh, we've got some dogs. Oh, ho, ho, we're back with uh, Envy here. So who's Envy talking to? Oh, Dr. Marco. Yeah, so I thought this other doctor that we saw in the previous episode was Dr. Marco. Clearly it's not, because Dr. Marco's here being held captive, it looks like. And I guess the dogs are there to guard him or something? And apparently they want Marco to do something. What is that something? I don't know. Oh, whoa, Dr. Marco's figured out they're trying to create a gigantic, uh, gigantic transmutation circle to create a philosopher's stone, it sounds like. And Envy says, not quite, but you're close. I've heard that before, not quite, but you're on the right track. Oh, wow, they're threatening to wipe out a whole village if Marco doesn't help. And if you remember, Marco kind of went to be the protector of this village or to help this village. So that's the blackmail. I don't guess that's really blackmail. It's sort of extortion of a sort, but it's not exactly blackmail. Help us or the village gets it. Holding a whole village hostage. That is pretty, pretty evil right there. Evil stuff. But you know, what's the point of saving the village if it curses the whole nation? I don't know. I guess it's just the emotional attachment. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what Envy said. With you humans, the emotion comes before the logic. Oh, he's talking about killing Hughes. Talking about when he killed Hughes. Why? Why Envy? Why, why do they got to rub that in? The bloody knife on the stake. Inside the belly is the name of the episode. Inside the belly, when I've got this distended abdomen from too much dressing. I ate leftover dressing for breakfast. That was my breakfast. All of the leftover dressing. Just ate it straight from the Tupperware. Who's this talking to uh, Wrath with this bizarre voice? I want to see who this is. I don't recognize this voice. It's highly modulated. Oh, wow. Wrath's saying he's kind of enjoying this caper that he's on. Made it to the top spot just as Father planned, who I guess is Hohenheim. Yeah, just kind of running down the list of people he's finding himself face to face with. Oh, and so he's talking to Pride. Is this the deadly sin with the modulated voice? Oh, is it actually the lamp post? Or is it the moth? Or we're just watching the moth getting eaten by the spider? Like, is Pride just simply the light in the lamp? Oh, wow. So the things that uh, Wrath is saying here, apparently Father wouldn't approve. Oh, so even though Gluttony did manage to escape his bonds, we don't really know. I guess Wrath doesn't know what's up. Wow, look at that, that big trench in the ground from when Gluttony blew that power out. And we still don't know the fate of Mustang and the folks that were in there when Gluttony got loose. And Ling was in there, right? Oh, there's Gluttony with that big eyeball out of his chest or whatever. Oh, gruesome, gruesome image. And there's the doctor I thought was Marco, who clearly isn't Marco. 
Oh, and the little panda. I love that like eyeball with the claws or fangs or whatever all around it. That's pretty cool. Lan Fan lost her arm, so she's got to go to Rush Valley, right? So he's saying Gluttony had another monster inside of him. I guess that's what's responsible for that insatiable appetite, right? Oh, the tongue just dangling there with that Ouroboros. Oh, is Mustang going to snap, snap, snap again? Oh, is he going to give Gluttony the lust treatment? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yes. Burn him. Or is Gluttony a little bit more resistant to the fire than Lust was? Oh, Gluttony's like eating the fire. Crap. And he just burped a little smoke plume. I thought that was just a carnival trick, a fire eater. <laughs> I love the running. They are running like there's no tomorrow to get away from Gluttony after he ate that burst of flame. You can't repeat the same trick there on Gluttony Mustang. Yeah, they're splitting up. So that way at least two of them survive, right? Oh, and of course, Gluttony's going after Mustang. And of course, Hawkeye's looking out for Mustang. Yes. We, uh, on the uh, comments, we decided that the perfect ship name is Must I. Like, Must I talk about these two being together? Or Must I. You got Must I, you should go to a doctor and get that checked out. But yeah, Mustang and Hawkeye. Oh, there was like a dog with red eyes spying on him or something. <laughs> the doctor doesn't care about saving anybody. He's ready to get out of town. If they want to jump in, they're welcome, but he's not going back for Edward and Alfonso. I said Alfonso. It's just Alphonse. I added that little extra O because I'm a big fan of Carlton. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. What was that blast that came out of Gluttony again? Oh, wow. That was a fake... Mustang, it was a decoy. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Good trick. Of course, yeah, he's really ticked off now. Oh, man, Mustang's having a rough way to go here. <laughs> I like Edward just losing his marbles on Mustang there when Mustang's pretty, pretty hurt. He's calling him a bonehead. Ling's bandaged up, but he looks like he's uh, holding himself up pretty well. Oh, yeah. They're revealing again. I guess Hawkeye wasn't there when they got the info about the Ouroboros from uh, Ling. Sinden. Oh, man. So this choice of uh, leaving these folks behind while some of them get out because the car is full, you can fit the little panda bear in the car. Come on, if you're leaving the panda bear behind, it's because you don't want the panda bear. But yeah, you shouldn't see them as children. I mean, they're pretty powerful. They've proven their skills. Not quite Mustang level, but they've proven their skills so far. Oh, wow, Mustang's giving him a pistol. I don't know, does an alchemist really need a pistol? Oh, wow, Alphonse doesn't even like it. He's like a Batman moment. Batman doesn't have any use for guns, right? Unless it's Golden Age Batman. Oh, thinking back to when Winry picked up that pistol. Telling him not to go dying. Oh, he took it. He took the gun. I feel like that's like a, a symbol of some kind of failure on Edward's part there. Curious to see how this plays out. Mustang in the car. Hawkeye in the car, Land Fan in the car, Edward running into the woods. And Mustang's telling him to, to hit the gas. Let's get out of here. <laughs> this is how you die young. I love it. I love that little commentary thrown in. But look at all those blasts from Gluttony out in the forest. Just leveling things. Look at the trenches those blasts make. And they shear, shear the trees clean. Oh, angry about the whole lust situation. I guess Gluttony was close to lust. So with Mustang out of the way, Gluttony's going to have to take his anger out on somebody else, I guess. Oh, oh, a dog with red eyes. That's the one we saw before. Oh, is this another homunculus? Oh, who is this? Is this Envy? Envy's the shapeshifter, right? Yes. 
It's envy. <laughs> Full Metal Pipsqueak. That's definitely going to get a reaction out of Edward. I can't wait. Are we going to see him go nuts when he when the show comes back? <laughs> Who are you calling a shrimpy flea sauce paramecium? Oh, man. Envy's getting out of the way pretty quickly there. I have no desire to tangle with any pipsqueaks. Oh, you know how to pick a fight with Edward there. <laughs> oh, and he still remembers all the pipsqueak comments in the laboratory. <laughs> It'd be pointing out the pinpoint memory. Oh, wow, Gluttony's still upset. And uh, yeah, we know there's this idea of having sacrifices, so... They want to save the Elric brothers. They want to save Mustang for a sacrifice, but there's nothing protecting Ling. Oh, Envy's curious about how this guy survived a sword battle. <laughs> he doesn't like being called kid any more than uh, Edward likes being called a pipsqueak. But he's, he, there's nothing restraining him from trying to chop up old Ling there. So Ling from Jing running from gluttony fast as he can. Uh-oh. Edward's going to try to get some free punches in. Oh, ho, ho, saving Ling's life there. Uh-oh. So, oh, we're not seeing the fight. They cut away. And then we learned, of course, that this son of uh, the Fuhrers is an adopted son. Either last episode or the episode before. I think it was last episode. I think it was the doctor that knew that, too. He wants his son to read something. What's he going to read something? Oh, he's reading a report he wrote about his own father, the Fuhrer of Amestris. Oh boy, is something gonna be in this essay that, that causes Wrath to, to feel guilty about what he's doing or something? We got Ling uh, using the old cutlass to fight against Envy there as this essay's being read. I wonder just how much the Fuhrer's wife knows about him. Talking about what a good dad he has, which is so strange if your dad is... I think it's fair to say inhuman if you're homunculus, right? Dad's not even human, but maybe he is a good father. We'll have to see how this goes. Of course, I'm inclined not to like him, you know. <laughs> Ling uh, holding pretty good there with Envy, but wasn't expecting the old python arm. Uh-oh, he's about to get stung? You don't get stung by a snake. Oh, no. Now there's the blade. <laughs> Ling doesn't seem stressed about it at all. Oh, ripped the snake arm off. Grabbed the old cutlass. Made a slice or two. Of course, the homunculus, pretty, they can heal through almost anything. So not any real threat there. Oh, I guess the slice uh, went through the eyes there to blind uh, envy until the eyes grow back. <laughs> he said he learned a few dirty moves. That is a pretty dirty move. Oh, wow. He wants to take Envy back. I guess he does want a homunculus because he wrapped up gluttony, right? I guess something about trying to study them for immortality or something like that. Wants to take a homunculus, interested in the Philosopher's Stone, all that sort of thing. Oh, wow. I like that idea of just making a well pop up under gluttony so the gluttony fell down. But, oh, well, gluttony got out of that pretty easily. But Edward's enjoying, like, basically free punching, you know, because he knows that he's can't be killed, but of course he could be hurt. Oh, see? He got hurt there. It's got to hurt when your brother whose animated armor gets thrown at you. Man, Ling, pretty good with that blade. I want to know more about Ling. Oh, dirty trick. Envy loves the dirty tricks, just like with Hughes. Now Envy turns into a lawn fawn, so he won't stab her. Stab him, stab them. Oh, no. Gluttony just kind of opened up. I wonder if instead of a blast that knocks things out, it's more like a void that pulls things in since it is gluttony. Maybe the force. Is, oh, it's like anything in the pathway just ceases to. Oh, no. Gluttony. Did gluttony just pull in envy? Did gluttony just destroy envy? Oh, no. Edward was in that blast. Well, I know that's not going to last, right? Edward's going to come back. I don't know about Ling, but Edward's got to come back. Gluttony, you might see the worst part of Al here. 
I could see if Al really didn't hold back at that point. Oh, and <laughs> Lon Fawn just wants to get out there and help Ling, but unfortunately, Ling was Thanksgiving dinner for gluttony along with Edward and Envy. So I guess if Edward comes back, they all three come back, right? Except Envy did get sheared through the midsection, so maybe Envy can't come back. Lon Fawn's still not understanding the full weight of her situation, I feel. Now we got must die here in some safe house, it looks like. Oh, they're at the doctor's place. Okay. Yeah, because they all did go away in that car together, so it makes sense they'd all go to the same place. <laughs> he said, sheesh. <laughs> I like it. I, that might be my first anime, sheesh. Talking about how the conspiracy goes all the way to the top here. I don't think the doctor cares. I think the doctor's really regretting being pulled into the middle of this clown show. Oh, wow, Mustang said he's going to set a bad example as an adult if he doesn't go nip this in the bud. Let's see if Mustang burns anybody else to the ground. Since he can't do it to Gluttony, maybe he'll go do it to the Fuhrer. <laughs> Hawkeye likes this bold, assertive Mustang. Yeah, Mustang in full effect here in the front seat of the car. Yeah, bringing up poor Maze Hughes. Darn near gets a tear every time they bring him back up. Oh, but he's thinking about heeding the warning Hughes gave him. The specter of Hughes still hanging heavy in this story. I, I suspect it will all the way through. Oh, man. Getting ready to walk through the doors. I guess this is like the main capital complex. And he doesn't know if it's the gateway to heaven or the gateway to H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> Hawkeye refusing to obey the order he gave her there. She's going to put herself in harm's way, not going to let him go alone. She's going to stand outside the door, watch his back from outside the door, I guess. <laughs> so this is the first time he's met Mustang, this general here. Surprised he's still in the office this late at night. He's asking about Grumman. Oh, that's the guy he was playing chess with. Yeah. He kept losing to Grumman. <laughs> he looks like a happy guy. Like, he looks like the kind of guy who'd really like popcorn for some reason. Like for no particular reason, he just has an afternoon snack of popcorn sitting on the porch talking to his grandkids and saying, hey, do you want some popcorn? And not microwave popcorn either. He has the old school popcorn popper. Oh, I'm talking about the bad tactics of this general that he's talking to. I love it. He's throwing long distance shade at this guy from the border dwelling coot. <laughs> he's like me. He's like, who's going to take advice from a popcorn eater? For the record, I love popcorn too. Maybe I'm projecting on uh, that grumman guy. Oh, wow. So is this general someone Mustang can trust or not? I guess that's what he's trying. <laughs> the old fox figured me out. Even, even though I would be angry at the uh, insult, I'm still someone you can count on. So maybe that was a way to kind of fill out whether or not this general could be trusted. Because like I said, it goes all the way to the top, the conspiracy. Yeah, still adjusting to the big city life here for Mustang. Oh, talking about how to sort out the drivel from the real information on the word on the street. I like that. And he is feeding the stuff he knows is true to this guy to see how this guy reacts. And again, I think he's filling him out to see if he's in on the conspiracy. So I don't know how to read this guy. Like he didn't react as if he knew it and is trying to pretend like he doesn't know it. He didn't react like he knew it and he wants to kill Mustang for knowing it. So maybe he's innocent enough. Are these all generals or who are these guys? They, they look like no fun. Like this looks like the world's most uncomfortable Thanksgiving dinner here around this big table. <laughs> they all want to hear the joke. This looks like a tough crowd, as they say in the stand-up comedy community. This is a tough crowd. You're going to bomb. Oh, no. Maybe they do know about the Fuhrer. Because look at this. They've brought him in there, and he's being confronted by the man himself. It was nice knowing you, Mustang. I think this might be where your story ends, dude. 
Oh goodness, Hughes must have figured this out. Hughes said the military was in danger. He, the military is the danger. Oh, Hughes knew more than anybody. And he was taken from us far too soon. Is this what gluttony stomach looks like? Or is this just taking him to another dimension? Like, does it open up a dimensional portal or just sort of like transportation? Like, what is gluttony's belly here? Blood everywhere. Where is Edward at exactly? It's like Greek ruins? Corpses? Oh, is that Ling? The corpse was dressed like Ling. Is something protecting Edward from becoming like Ling? No, that wasn't Ling. Ling didn't have a shirt on. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, what a way to leave me hanging. So apparently Gluttony's belly are like some Greek ruins or something. Blood-soaked Greek ruins. I don't know what to make of that, but it's a good way to get my day started. Wake me up a little bit watching a little Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Always good fun. Looks like Mustang's in a bit of a pinch. <laughs> this next episode could be his last. Doesn't look good. Maybe he was trying to fill out this general and I thought we could trust the general. I think I thought wrong. Because I don't know how Mustang's getting out of this except Hawkeye's out on the sidewalk. So we'll see what Hawkeye can do. How in the heck is Edward going to come back from Gluttony's belly? Will Ling come back or is Ling done for? I really don't care if Envy makes it back or not. In fact... Let Envy not make it back. I don't care. But the only way I'm going to know what happens next is to watch another episode. So I'm just going to say I'm proud of you for watching anime, and I'll talk to you again soon. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. There is a link to the Patreon in the video description, so click on that if you want to go see what's going on at the Patreon. See things like extended cuts of the reaction videos, early access to reaction and review videos, and occasional random bonus videos. Thank you. Talk to you soon.